Praise God. Once again, we come to you in the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Isa pong mapagpalang hapon muli sa ating lahat na taga-subaybay, nakikinig po ng ating live streaming ng Kingdom of Jesus Fellowship International. Today, I am going to talk about a very important topic or theme in the Bible, and that is the topic of courage. Amen. Courage is a character that enables us to overcome our fear, dangers in front of us, and overcoming the things that are troubling us. It is a very important character that should be possessed by a Christian in order to overcome all the obstacles and hindrances in his or her journey. And we find in the Bible some verses about courage, some verses about being courageous. In Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, it is said, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. In Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. The Bible admonishes us to be courageous. The Lord wants us to be strong and courageous. But why is it that sometimes our courage fails us? So what do we do when our courage fail? In the Bible, we will see a story about courage. And it is found in the book of Numbers, chapters 13 to 14. It is the story of the people of God, the Israelites. We will remember that the Israelites have been under the bondage of slavery when they were in Egypt. For more or less 400 years, they were under the clutches of the Pharaoh and the Egyptians, subjecting them to slavery, letting them suffer for so long that they had to cry out to God for salvation, redemption, and deliverance. And it was at this point when God called Moses and sent him to Pharaoh to free the people of God, the Israelites. We will see that during the time, the Pharaoh rejected Moses' message of setting God's people free. But we know from history and from the biblical accounts that God performed signs and wonders for him to be able to deliver the Israelites from the clutches of Pharaoh. We can see in the Bible, it was recorded in the book of Exodus, that God performed wonders and miracles. There were ten plagues. Technically, they were uh, plagues, but we can see that it was a miracle because it was a supernatural act, and it was only God who could do that. The Israelites were delivered from the bondage of slavery on Egypt amid signs and wonders. We see that the Nile River became blood. There were frogs and god flies and pestilence upon their livestock. There were boils and hails and uh, storms, locusts and night turning into day. And the last of which was the death of the firstborn in Egypt in which the firstborn of Pharaoh himself died and it was at this point when pharaoh realized that the god of israelites was powerful was extraordinary and so he had nothing left to do but to let god's people go and uh, we can see that uh, amidst their journey upon their deliverance from the bondage of slavery god continued to do wonders and miracles and the greatest of which is the parting of the Red Sea. Uh, who could have thought that, you know, 
some superhighway can be built amidst the Red Sea, and it was only God who could do that in the face of uh, the Israelites' flight from Egypt. And so when they were able to free themselves from the clutches of Pharaoh, in Numbers 13 to 14, we can see the account that God had told Moses to send spies to the promised land. We can see that in the book of Genesis, God promised the Israelites uh, a place where they can dwell. And it was the promised land, Canaan. So in Numbers 13 to 14, we can see there, the Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan which I am giving to Israel for each ancestral tribe send one of its leaders and uh, for all the tribes of Israel one leader was chosen to be a representative to be a spy to explore Canaan the promised land in verse 16 the names of those who have been chosen to explore the land one of them was Joshua son of Nun, and Caleb, and the rest of the tribes of Israel. When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, Go up through the Negev and unto the hill country, see that the land is, what the land is like, and whether the people there who live there are strong or weak. What kind of land do they live on? What kind of uh, people are they? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they unwalled, fortified? How is the soil? And so on and so forth. And so they went to explore the land, including Joshua and Caleb. When they came back, the spies made report to Moses. And most of them gave Moses this account. They said, we went into the land to which you sent us. And true enough, it does flow with milk and honey. These are its fruit. They were able to get back some fruits like grapes and pomegranate from the promised land. But then in verse 28 to 29, they continued on. But the people who live there are very powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there, the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites who lived near the sea along Jordan. This was their report. Numbers 13.30 Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, We should go up and take possession of the land, for we can certainly do it. But the man who had gone up with him said, No, we cannot attack those people. They are stronger than we are. Praise God. What can we see here? This man was sent to spy on the land, the promised land, and what did they do? They came back with two kinds of reports. The bad report and the good report. The bad report was that there were residents there. And the residents are the Amalekites, Jebusites, Amorites. And they are very strong and powerful. And they are very big and giants. May kita po natin dito na sa buhay po natin, Sa halip po na ang tingnan natin ay yung magagandang bagay, we focus on the negative of things. We focus on the bad report of things. And this is exactly what the Israelites did. They went and see the land. They saw that it was flowing with milk and honey, but they did not see the milk and honey. They saw the Amalekites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, how big they were, how big and powerful they were, and they saw the fortified cities of Canaan. 
And so there, thank God for the lives of Caleb and Joshua, because despite the negative report of their companions, they saw the good in the land and that it was flowing with milk and honey. And despite, you know, the truth is that there are enemies in the land. There are big and giant people in the land. There are residents there. The cities are fortified and it's very hard to penetrate. But they did not see that. Caleb and Joshua did not see the negativity in the land. What they saw was that it was flowing with milk and honey. So despite the bad report, there were two who came up with a good report. There were two who came up positive about the things that were happening in the land. And so despite every, everything, in verse 30, Caleb said, we should go up and take possession of the land because we can certainly do it. He believed that they can do it despite that there were giants in it, despite that the cities were fortified and the walls are uh, very difficult to penetrate. That is the fact. But Caleb and Joshua went beyond what their eyes could see. Amen. They went beyond that and hung on and looked on to the promise of God that this is the land of promise. And true enough, it is rich, it is fruitful, it is productive. Amen. Sometimes in our lives, you know, in front of us, there are many predicaments and circumstances. There are bad and there are good things that happen to us. But sometimes, most of the times, we focus on the negative things. We focus on the bad things instead of magnifying the good things. Amen? There were good things. They, it was flowing with milk and honey. There were good reports because there's a lot of fruits that they can enjoy in the land. But the other spies did not see that. Only Caleb and Joshua saw that. Amen? In our lives, that is likewise what we do. We focus on the negative instead of the positive. In, we focus on the bad report instead of the good report. And when that happens, that is when problems come. As a result of the negative and bad report, the people cried out and grumbled. Amen. If we can see po in, the, in, uh, in the next verses, because, you know, they were already uh, scared of the giants because they were strong and big, the Amalekites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites, as well as the city, hall, city walls, which were strong and fortified. The response of the people in Numbers 14, 3 to 4, they said, Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Would it, it be better if we just go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, We should just choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Hallelujah. Can you see what is happening here? God has been gracious to them. God has been good to them. God has been great to them that God delivered them from 400 years of bondage of slavery. And then when they were confronted with negativities in front of them, they focused to magnify these negativities and forgot totally about what, is, what God has done to them in the past. And so what did they do? Two things. They complained and they grumbled. And as a result of that, they rebelled against God, planning to go back to Egypt. Amen? They planned to go back to Egypt. The very place where they suffered, they wanted to go back. Minsan po sa buhay natin, ganun tayo. Kapag tayo po ay nakakaranas ng pagsubok, matinding problema, matinding kabigatan, we are going through a very uh, difficult situation in our lives. Instead of looking at the faithfulness and greatness of our God, we try to complain, we try to grumble, 
and we try to backslide and go back to Egypt. Egypt is a representation and symbol of the world. The Bible says if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. You have been given a new life. You have been given a new beginning. But most people, when they go through difficult circumstances in their lives, instead of, instead of trusting in the Lord, instead of trusting in God, they go back to the world. Balik na lang tayo sa Egypt. Balik na lang tayo doon. Dinala tayo dito ng Diyos para lang ipapatay sa mga higanteng ito, na mga Hittites, Jebusites, and Amorites. Let us better go back to Egypt. This is what they have come into, amen, as a solution. But praise God for Joshua and Caleb because Joshua and Caleb did not give in to the pressure, did not look at the negativities that are confronting them, but instead they put their trust in the Lord. In Numbers 14, 8, 9, they said, If the Lord is pleased with us, He will lead us into the land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and He will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not be afraid of the people of the land because we will swallow them up. Their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Amen. It is the same message that the Lord is giving us. If we are confronted with a difficult situation, instead of failing in our courage, we should be courageous and strong, just like Joshua and Caleb believing in the promises of God, that God will deliver to us our enemies, that God beyond the walls of uh, Canaan, you can see a land that is flowing with milk and honey. It speaks of blessing. It speaks of uh, prosperity. It speaks of goodness. Amen. Because the Bible says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Joshua and Caleb had the right mindset. In spite of everything that is in front of them, you know, all the negativities, the giants, the enemies, and the fortified walls of Canaan, they did not look at that. They did not look at the negative factors, but continued to trust in the Lord. They were declaring the protection of the Lord will be upon us and He will surely deliver them to us. Amen. The result of complaining and grumbling will, you know, will, will just be for our disadvantage because God, you know, when we are confronted with all these things, God wants us to remember the things that He has done in our lives in the past. Just like the Israelites. Alam niyo po kung bakit uh, ang ating uh, katapangan, yung ating kalakasan ay nawawala? Why, do, why does courage fail in our lives? Why do we fail to be strong in the midst of our circumstances? Because we forget. Because we forget. Tayo po ay nakakalimot sa kabutihan ng Diyos. Sa kabutihan ginawa ng Diyos, just like the Israelites, they forgot totally how God delivered them from the hand of the Pharaoh and the Egyptians. 400 years of bondage in slavery, God delivered them, but they completely forgot about that. Much so, they forgot that God made a highway in the Red Sea, that they were able to safely cross the Red, the Red Sea and uh, flee from the pursuing uh, Egyptians. They have forgotten. At ganyan po sa buhay natin, madali po tayong makalimot. We have short-term memory. We forget what the Lord has done in our lives in the past na para bagang wala na pong uh, magagawa ang Diyos sa kabila ng ating mga nararanasang mahirap na bagay. They completely forgot God's promise. God promised them the land. God delivered them. God let them go from uh, their uh, hardships in Egypt. But despite all of these things, 
negative reports overshadowed the goodness of God. Negative report overwhelmed them. And as a result, their faith in the promises of God diminished. It was just gone like that, except for Joshua and Caleb. So in our lives, when we focus on the negativities that is confronting us, instead of the promises and faithfulness of God, we will be just like the Israelites. We will complain. We will grumble. Magtatampo tayo sa Diyos. Magagalit tayo sa Diyos. At magbabackslide tayo. We, we would rather go back to the world and, you know, do the things that we used to do. Hindi po dapat ganon. Because, you know, when the Lord has called us by His grace to be saved, Amen. That is the greatest thing that has happened in our lives. And to undermine that and say, hmm, balik na lang ako sa mundo, balik na lang ako sa dati kong gawa, gawa na lang uli ako ng mga kasalanan, kasi naman, hindi naman ako napapakinggan ng Diyos, hindi naman ako nakikita ng Diyos, hindi naman ako tinutulungan ng Diyos. Kapatid, nakalimutan mo na ba kung ilang beses kang iniligtas ng Diyos, pinagpala ng Diyos, tinulungan ng Diyos, kinaawaan, kinahabagan ng Diyos. Kinakailangan wag mong kalimutan yon. We should not forget. We should not forget what God has done in our lives. When we do that, our courage will never fail us. But why did courage fail in the lives of the Israelites? Aside from forgetting the promises of God, Aside from forgetting the grace and the faithfulness of God, they have also focused on their own natural abilities. When they saw the giants, the Amalekites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, they saw the physical attributes of these enemies and they saw how small they are, how weak they are compared to these uh, Canaanites, they lost all of their hope and faith and said, Oh, talo na tayo. Wala tayong magagawa. We will be devoured and eaten alive by these giants. We will not have victory. We will not conquer them. We will not be able to penetrate and occupy the land. They look at their own natural abilities. Once we do that, once we trust in our natural abilities, we will fail. Amen? But God wants us to put our trust and faith in Him that it is not by our might, it is not by our own power, it is not by our own abilities, it is not by our own understanding that we will gain victory, but it is by the power of the Spirit of God. So, we should not be like the Israelites who looked at themselves and trusted in their own natural abilities and resources instead of looking at God who delivered them, who, great, who made great wonders in their lives in Egypt and on their escape to Canaan. So looking at our own abilities, talaga pong, uh, our courage will fail us. Kasi po, we are weak naturally, eh. but God in us is very strong. Ang Diyos po na suma sa atin ay malakas, makapangyarihan, ay, at siya po ay may kakayanang gumawa ng mga dakilang bagay. Kaya huwag kang magtiwala sa sarili mong karunungan, kaalaman, abilidad. Kulang iyan. Magtiwala ka sa Diyos sapagkat ang Diyos ay sapat at higit pa sa ating inaasahan. He can do great and mighty things beyond our comprehension beyond our expectation. Amen? So, those are the things that God wants us to, to learn today. Number three, when does courage fail us? Our courage fail us when we begin to listen to the doubters, to the unbelievers, to the people who are very, very negative. Once you listen to them, once you listen 
to what they are saying instead of listening to what God is saying to you, you will fail. You will not have the courage to confront whatever is in front of you. The spies, besides Caleb and Joshua, listen. They chose to listen to their negative thoughts. Likewise, the people of Israel chose to listen to these negative spies. Instead of listening to Joshua, instead of listening to Caleb, they listened to the bad report, they listened to the negative report, and that is a very disastrous decision. And likewise in our lives, nananawagan po ang Panginoon, huwag po nating pakinggan ang mga pangit at negatibong naririnig natin sa ating paligid. Hindi po sila ang final authority sa ating buhay. Pakinggan po natin kung ano po ang sinasabi ng Diyos sa atin. Pakinggan po natin kung ano ang sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos sa atin. Because it is the scriptures, it is the word of God that is the final authority. So don't listen to the negative doubters around you. Don't listen to the unbelievers around you. Don't listen to all their negative report. Amen? Listen to the voice of God. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life. And once you do that, you will be strong and you will be courageous just like Joshua 1.9 admonishes us. So these are the things that we can learn from the lives of the Israelites. Their courage failed them because number one, if I may summarize, they did not listen to, to the voice of God. Instead, they listened to the doubters, to the negativities that is in front of them. Number two, they forgot the promises of God. They easily forgot what God has done in their lives, delivering them from their enemies. And number three, they focused on their natural abilities, on their natural strength, on their natural uh, understanding. If you do that, you will fail. And your courage will fail you. So ano pong nangyari nung uh, ang mga Israelita po ay uh, nakinig po sa mga negative thoughts and at saka negative report ng kanilang uh, mga spies instead of listening to Caleb and Joshua. Na po, po disaster po. Kasi alam niyo ba na ang mga Israelita they could have entered the promised land Canaan in 40 days. But because of their bickerings, because of their doubts and unbeliefs, because of their fear of entering into the promised land because they have seen these giants who are residents of the land, instead of, uh, you know, instead of uh, being positive, they were able to delay their entry to the promised land. So from 40 days originally, the plan of God was for them to conquer the promised land in 40 days. But because of their fear, because of their disobedience, because of their negativities, because of their unbelief, they believe the negative report of the other spies, their entry to the promised land, to their blessing, to their victory has been delayed for 40 years. And what happened to them? They were just wandering, circling in the desert. Sila po ay nagpaikot-ikot lang sa ilang ng apat na pong taon. Amen? Na wala pong silang direksyon at uh, hindi po, uh, and then, at uh, puro po defeat ang kanilang nararanasan. Puro po hardship ang kanilang nararanasan. Sa buhay po natin, God has a perfect plan for us. But sometimes because of our disobedience, because of our unbelief, because of our fear, because of our, you know, uh, trusting our own understanding and abilities, God's plan for us, instead of being accomplished in such a short time, is being delayed. Just like the Israelites. In 40 days, they could have entered the promised land. They could have, you know, uh, lived there and uh, enjoyed the bounty. And the blessings but it did not happen why because of the negativity 
because of fear, because of unbelief, because they did not trust God enough in their lives. And so for 40 years, they were just circling and wandering in the desert with no direction. At uh, every effort that they did, you know, to conquer the land failed because God was not with them. Amen? At sa buhay po natin, ganyan po ang nangyayari madalas sa ating mga buhay kapag tayo po ay uh, kagaya ng mga Israelita na sa halip na magtiwala sa Diyos ay uh, tayo po ay nagkakaroon po ng uh, pagdududa sa Diyos. Kinakalimutan po natin yung uh, kabutihan ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay. So ano po ang nangyari sa mga Israelita nung sila po ay nasa ilang? Uh, judgment came upon them. Amen. The result of their complaining, of their grumbling against the Lord, their negativity and not trusting the Lord resulted in judgment and failure and defeat. Numbers 14:18. The Lord is slow to anger, abounding in love, forgiving sin and rebellion. Yet, he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for the sin of the fathers up to the third and the fourth generation. Nakakatakot po ano? When we rebel against God, when we do not trust Him, when we forget His goodness, His grace, His faithfulness, just like the Israelites, even though God is slow to anger, Numbers 14.18 says, He will not leave the guilty unpunished. He will punish the children of the sin of their fathers up to the third and fourth generation. Hindi lamang po pala tayo ang mapapanish for our rebellion and unbelief in God, but also the third and the fourth generation of our salin lahi. Amen? Kaya nagtataka po tayo kung bakit sa ating mga pamilya ay uh, uh, it seems like we struggle a lot in, in overcoming problems and troubles para bagang uh, sinumpa yung ating mga pamilya sapagkat sabi po ng Bible, kapag tayo po pala ay nasa hindi pagsunod at rebellion sa Panginoon, instead po na blessing ang darating sa atin ay judgment at hindi lamang po sa atin, kundi hanggang sa ikatlo at apat na salin lahi. Kaya makikita po natin na mayroong mga sakit, na sakit na ng mga ninuno na ipapasa pa po sa mga uh, younger generation na matay sa breast cancer yung uh, ninuno hanggang sa ikalawa, ikatlo, ikaapat na salin lahi ay naipapasa po yung, yung cancer na iyon o kung anumang sakit iyon. That is called the curse, amen, of, of our rebellion against God. And that can only be cut and stop when we surrender our life to the Lord, repent of our sins, and trust Him. And that the blood of the Lamb will cleanse us from all the sins that has plagued our families, our lives throughout generation. Mapuputol lamang po yun kapag tayo nagkaroon ng relasyon sa Diyos at tayo po'y mahuhugasan ng dugo ng Panginoong Yesu Kristo na natigis sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Kaya po, huwag po nating nasain na tayo po ay uh, judgment ang dumating sa ating mga buhay, kagaya ng mga Israelita. They, may, they were made to wander for 40 years instead of just, you know, being able to uh, possess the blessing in 40 days. They were wandering for uh, 40 years in the desert with no direction to go. At alam niyo po ba, ikinamatay na lamang po ng mga older generation and they were never, never, able to enter the promised land. At hindi po yan ang nais ng Panginoon sa atin. God has a wonderful plan, a perfect plan for our lives, and He wants us to experience that. He wants us to be able to enter the promised land. He wants us to be able to enjoy life, everlasting life that is, you know, prosperous life that is good because that is the purpose of Him dying on the cross. Amen? That we may be able to live a life That is bountiful. But why are we not experiencing that? Because we are like the Israelites. Amen? Instead of 
putting our faith and trust in the Lord, we do not believe. We choose to believe on the negativities and the bad reports and the bad things that are happening in our lives. And we completely forget how God has been great and, you know, uh, good to us in our lives in the past. Amen. So, kaya po sa buhay natin, kinakailangan, let us set our mind straight, let us set our focus straight and, you know, continue to obey the Lord. Amen. Tayo po ay patuloy na magtiwala sa Panginoon. Ang, ang, ang Panginoon po, nais niya tayong pagpalain, nais niyang maranasan natin ang buhay na walang hanggan, nais niyang mabuhay tayo ng uh, malaya sa sakit karamdaman, nais niyang tayo po ay managana, sapagkat ito ang dahilan kung bakit siya namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Nakakalungkot po na marami sa atin na hindi nararanasan ito. At ito po ang dahilan. Sapagkat madalas magkaminsan, kagaya po tayo ng mga Israelita, nakakalimutan natin ang kabutihan ng Diyos at pinapaniwalaan natin ang mga negatibo at pangit na nagaganap sa ating mga buhay. Nagtatampo tayo sa Diyos, bumabalik tayo sa kasalanan, ginagawa uli natin yung ating mga iniwanan. Sa buhay na ito, nais ng Panginoon na at sa araw na ito na isang Panginoon na tayo po ay uh, magtuwid ng landas. Kagaya ng mga Israelita, na isang Panginoon na ang makita natin ay yung kanyang kabutihan nung uh, kanyang inilabas ang mga Israelita sa Egypto. Ikaw ba ay, uh, are you confronted with your Amalekites and Jebusites, with the giants that are besetting you, giving you problems, giving you trouble and hardship? Did you see a horrible, uh, did you re- hear a horrible report from the doctor that you have an incurable disease? Did you just see your business, you know, go bankrupt? Did you just see your family in disarray because your relationship has been uh, broken? Ang pamilya mo ba ay uh, wasak? Ikaw ba ay uh, suffering from uh, mental torture and depression and deep longing and loneliness? Ikaw ba ay nakakaranas ng isang matinding pagsubok problema, kabigatan ng buhay? Totoo, ang mga Amerika, ang mga Israelita, nakita nila, yung mga spies, nakita nila na merong mga higante. Nakita nila na merong mga kaaway at kalaban sa kanaan. Nakita nila na masyadong makapal yung pader at hindi nila basta-basta mapapasok. Pero, sa kabila ng lahat ng ito, merong land flowing with milk and honey. Ang nais nice ng Panginoon, huwag mong tingnan ang nasa harapan mong pangit. Huwag mong tingnan ang mga problema sa harapan mo. Tingnan mo yung pangako ng Diyos. Tingnan mo yung katapatan ng Diyos. Tingnan mo yung kabutihan ng Diyos. God does not want you to focus on the negativities of your life. God wants you to focus on His faithfulness, on His goodness, on His grace, on His mercy in your life. That He is a God who can do wonders. That He is a God who can deliver you. Just like He did with the Israelites when He set them free from the bondage of slavery in Egypt. Parting the Red Sea, doing the impossible, doing the miraculous. Amen? In your life, God can do the same. If you will put your trust in Him, if you will not forget that He is good, that He is great, that He is mighty, that He is wonderful. Amen? And so in your life, is there something that you are being confronted with that makes you think, hmm, this is too difficult. I would rather go back to Egypt. Hmm, this is too heavy to bear. I would just, you know, complain and grumble and, uh, and uh, you know, go back to my old life. Amen? Hindi po yan ang nais ng Panginoon. Ang nais po ng Panginoon sa atin ay magtagumpay. Ang nais po ng Panginoon sa atin ay maranasan natin ang masaganang buhay. So, ano man po ang ating uh, kinalalagyan ngayon, whatever we are being confronted with right now, whatever is your Amalekite and Jebusite, whatever is hindering you from being able to experience the goodness of God in your life. Today, you can turn it around. Amen? You can turn it around by stop, by stopping to put your trust in yourself and put your trust in God. The same God who delivered the Israelites from the Egyptians, 
the same God who parted the Red Sea, the same God who did great and miraculous things in the face of the Egyptians and Pharaoh when he sent plagues so that the Pharaoh could be persuaded to deliver the Israelites from slavery. It's the same God who can work in your life right now because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you have a sickness, incurable as it is? Did the doctor say, you know, you only have six months to live? Did you have an ultimatum that your life, you know, is going down the drain? Your business is bankrupt. Your, uh, your mental health is uh, at the poorest state. Whatever you are in right now, God is a great God who can do a great and mighty thing in your life. Today, let's just set our hearts straight. Amen. Let us ask for forgiveness if we have rebelled, complained, grumbled, and backslidden. Let us pray. Father, forgive me because I have complained. I have not trusted you. I have put my faith in my own self. I have forgotten your promises, your goodness, and your grace, and I have just focused on the negativities in my life. But today, I want to set my heart straight. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Forgive me for my rebellion and backsliding. Forgive me for my unbelief. Forgive me for my failures. Forgive me for my fear. Forgive me for I have failed in my courage and I have become weak. And, and my unbelief overwhelmed me. Today, I surrender my everything to you. I surrender my life to you. Come into me. I accept you, my Lord, God, and Savior. Turn my life around. Do a great and mighty thing in, your, in my life. Today, God is willing and able to do a great and mighty thing in your life. God is touching you in, a, in the most miraculous way because I see right now that your body is being restored by the Lord. Yes, receive your healing. Receive your healing from liver cancer. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Even your kidney is being restored by the Lord. The tumor that is in your body is being melted by the Lord. In the name of Jesus, even right now, the Lord is fixing broken relationships, families that have been strayed away. God is restoring it in the name of Jesus. Just thank the Lord and claim your miracle, claim your healing. It is the same God who parted the Red Sea and allowed the Israelites to walk safely. It is the same God who is doing that miracle in your life right now. Just receive in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are on the verge of financial bankruptcy. But the Lord is saying, My son, my daughter, be faithful to me in your giving, in your tithes and offering, and I will restore you. I will give back what the devil has stolen from you. Yes, receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, O oh God, I pray for financial breakthrough to my brethren, O oh Lord God, who are listening right now, who are desperate, who are in misery. In the name of Jesus, just move in their lives and let them be able to experience living in abundance, in your grace, in your mercy. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Whatever I have not mentioned right now, God is a God of miracle. He is a miracle working God. You can just claim it and thank the Lord for He has done something great, something good, something beautiful in your life. Today, before I end, may I repeat what the Lord has given me as a revelation in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. 
kasama po natin ang Panginoon. San man tayo magpunta, ano man ang mangyari sa buhay natin. At ang pangako niya, hindi niya po tayo iiwan o pababayaan. So there's no reason for us, there's no legitimate and valid reason for us to fail in our courage because the Lord has commanded us be strong and courageous. Praise God, to God be the glory. And today, if you are being touched by the Lord to give in the ministry, giving is the secret and key to blessing because the Bible says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Magbigay ka at ikaw ay bibigyan. Marami pong tao ay nabubuhay sa kahirapan. Marami pong tao ay nabubuhay sa sumpa ng kahirapan, ng utang, nababaon sa utang, sapagkat hindi po nila alam ang sikreto ng pagpapala. At ang sikreto po ng pagpapala ay nasa pagbibigay. You can never outgive God because the Bible commands us to give our tithes and offering into the storehouse so that there may be food in the storehouse of God to be able to do the end time work of evangelizing, of uh, preaching the gospel to all the peoples of the earth. And we are, you know, at the end of the end times. So we should be working double time to be able to evangelize the lost in the last days. And to be able to do that, we need resources We need resources to be able to pursue the great commission of our Lord Jesus Christ. At uh, sa atin pong uh, broadcast ngayon, if you are being touched by the Lord to give, uh, you can give in uh, so many ways. At marami na pong uh, you know, pamamaraan para po tayo ay uh, makapagbigay. At sa atin pong pagbibigay, ang pangako po ng Diyos, ay ibabalik niya ito, siksik, liglig, umaapaw, walang sukat, pagkalagyan. Alam niyo po, we can never outgive God. God is the source of all blessings. Pinakamalaking pagkakamali po natin kapag naisip natin na meron tayong pag-aari dito sa mundo. Everything that we own is given to us by God. And we are just you know, stewards of the Lord to be able to to experience you know what the Lord has promised in our lives and kinakailangan po maging faithful stewards po tayo amen so uh, i know that your heart is uh, to be able to uh, reach out to the lost and uh, if you are being touched by the Lord to give and bless this ministry you are most welcome amen and the Lord has promised that he will give back what We give unto His ministry because God is great. So, uh, nasa caption po, uh, yung, yung details po ng ating uh, uh, Sunday service every uh, 10 o'clock and 3 p.m. dito po sa Marikina. At uh, ang ating pong uh, man, uh, morning service ay 10 ang ating pong uh, afternoon service ay 3 p.m. And uh, we continue to uh, strictly follow protocols. At sa inyo pong pagbibigay, muli nasa caption details, yung ating uh, means of giving. It could be by bank to bank. It could be by GCash, I believe. So, uh, just read the captions po sa details ng ating uh, post ngayon. So, praise God. Be strong and courageous, my brethren. Let not your courage fail you because the Lord is with you wherever you go. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And God is pro has promised victory upon us. To God be the glory.